Um, today's session is going to be about colors. It's going to be about colors um, for branding and accessibility. Um, I believe that this is a pretty important topic uh, that we should talk about. Um, well, we know that the colors are playing an important role uh, in design, um, is influencing and changing the perceptions, um, emotions, and um, basically it's a part of the user experience, right? Um, this recorded is going. This uh, session is going to be recorded. You're going to find it if you want to look over. We're going to have also some resources, uh, some uh, links. Um, you're going to find it on YouTube on uh, Open Bootcamp uh, um, YouTube channel. I think that we should get going. And as people will come in, uh, they're welcome uh, to come and join us. All right. So uh, today's topic: um, colors. Um, first of all, um, we're going to talk about very briefly um, how the colors are important in um, branding when we're going to talk about branding. Um, well, first of all, when we're going to talk about branding, uh, the colors are important because they help with brand recognition. Um, well, the color is um, um, a key element uh, that uh, is creating the visual identity, right? Um, consistent use of uh, colors helps um, the brand recognition, um, is make it um, easier for the users and for the consumers, right? Uh, to um, identify uh, the brand, to associate specific colors to a specific brand. Now, if you think, for example, and, uh, on Coca-Cola brand, right? It has the specific, that specific red, that um, even by far, if you see, you know that probably it's going to be an advertisement uh, or about Coca-Cola or something like that, right? Uh, the second one, you're talking about the a brand personality. Um, the colors uh, are creating, are evoking emotions. Um, and um, um, the choice of color uh, that you're using uh, in branding uh, is communicating usually the personality and the values of the of the brand of the company. Uh, for example, if you're talking about um, warm uh, colors, um, those um, can be translated into I don't know passion or um, the 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 cool colors. When when you're talking about cool colors, you're talking about calmness. Um, uh, or something, a brand that is reliable, reliable right? Uh, another one is differentiation. Uh, you're sticking out from the crowd. You're creating your own brand uh, and uniqueness through the colors. Uh, also, we're talking about cultural significance um, because co colors might um, uh, hold um, 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 a, a cultural, if I can say, uh, regional significance, right? Uh, understanding the, the culture context um, of the colors it's uh, essential uh, for uh, like global brands um, because after all this uh, is ensuring the the visual identity now when we are talking about accessibility because we're gonna go in both uh, both uh, sides accessibility from the point of uh, uh, view of the user and the consumer and branding from the point of uh, uh, view or you know when we're talking about the, the company and the, the business accessibility uh, we're going to talk about contrast and readability because this is very important this is uh, uh, one of the uh, the big things that usually we're creating through colors um, uh, we're talking about the high contrast uh, between the text and the uh, colors uh, background or um, enhance uh, uh, readability um, another one is the color coding for information. Um, uh, the color coding usually is um, is um, um, sending information, is conveying information, um, but it's it's not supposed to be uh, only color coding. That color coding usually um, has beside it a text, an icon, something that can help uh, in case of people that, for example, um, are not able to see that color. They have uh, another element that they can tell them, hey, this is a um, home button or um, I don't know, uh, whatever you want to send through that color, whatever information you want to send. Um, user interface navigation, um, uh, uh, user interface, uh, the colors are um, um, are used as a guideline. And um, basically, um, um, 
we will talk a little bit later about the uh, 60 30 10 rule um, and how this uh, helps the users navigate through the app um, inclusive design of course we're talking about accessibility we're talking about uh, creating a design that is inclusive for everyone um, uh, we're talking about the um, the color choices that we're making in order for everyone to to be able to access our design um, now that we made like a big picture of uh, the importance of the colors in uh, um, in our um, design, I would like to move to Figma, um, where I created um, my Figma looks like this. <laughs> We're going to talk about all of those today. Uh, and let's start first with the color wheel. Everything starts from here. Color wheel. Um, if you want to put a definition to the color wheel, color wheel is... Um, um, it's a circular diagram, right? Uh, where the colors are arranged um, by their um, chromatic relationship. Uh, we're starting from the middle and in the middle, you're gonna see the primary colors. Um, those are the foundation of the colors in the color wheel. Uh, they cannot be created through any other colors by mixing any other colors um, in, tra uh, in, in traditional color theory. Um, they are the red, blue, and uh, and yellow. Around them, and we're going to have them here. Around them, we are going to have the secondary um, the secondary colors. Those are creating by mixing um, two primary colors. Uh, for example, the yellow and yellow and red. Um, those are giving us uh, the orange. Further on, blue and red, purple and uh, blue and uh, yellow, uh, green. Um, um, beside those two, the primary and secondary colors, um, we are having the tertiary uh, colors. Those colors uh, are created by mixing a primary color, let's say red, with a secondary color orange. And depending of the quantity, the amount of the color that, we, that we're going to put in this mix, we are going to have shades of. So we're going to have shades of, we're going to have a more orangey and then red, uh, red orange and even stronger red orange, right? And we're creating those uh, tertiary colors. Um, this is the color wheel that we are using. Of course, there are so, so many other colors that um, we can play with, but everything starts from here. Now, we know the importance of the colors in design. Um, we know, hey, those are the colors, right? What's next? How are we going to combine them? And how are we going to put them, put them in our design? Well, for this is the color harmonies. Um, well, three main um, ways of combining the colors are seen usually in design. And the first one, I would like to say the complementary colors. Well, if you look, um, if you look here, I'm, I just made it like that. Um, complementary colors are the ones who are opposite to each other like literally opposite to each other. If I'm looking at this yellow, yellow and violet, those two are uh, complementary um, colors. Um, now, um, they have different uh, application. We are using the colors for different purposes, right? Usually when you're creating, uh, as a designer, when you're creating a color palette, you're supposed to um, to have a lot of information about who's the target audience, what is the, the purpose of, of, uh, of uh, what is the message that you want to, to, to send? What is the purpose of your design? What are you creating and for whom? Um, where is the target audience living, you know? Um, there, there's a lot of questions that you have to think of and you have to have to answer answers to in order to find out the right, um, uh, the right color palette. So um, in this case, uh, the um, uh, complementary colors, um, they're used um, if you want to create high contrast. Um, as you see, they're pretty strong colors. We're talking about uh, high contrast in and vibrant uh, visual um, interest. You want to catch the attention, to drag, to, to get the attention of the of the of the user. Um, it's uh, a little bit hard to use them in uh, big doses in your design, as you see, because they're very strong. Um, but it's very good to use them when you want for something to stand out. Further on, another type of uh, harmony of colors. We're talking about um, analogous colors. Well, those colors 
are the colors that we see, and I'm going to go here. We're going to see, uh, we see them in the color wheel, but they are one after another. As you see, all the shades of orange and red, or all the shades of, I don't know, some yellow and green. If there are three, four, one after another, those are the colors um, that we call them analogous colors. Um, those colors usually are uh, are used, if we're talking about application, um, they are used um, to create harmony. As you see, it gives you a sense of calmness. It gives you um, a sense of comfort. Um, so um, basically, um, this kind of colors are more maybe comfortable to work with. All right. Now, the third way of uh, using the colors, um, we're talking about tertiary colors. Uh, those colors are uh, the colors who are having an equal distance between the, the three of them. As you see, they're creating a triangle. Um, and these colors um, usually um, are striking a very, a very, a very strong, uh, they're creating a very strong uh, visual. Um, and also they're very rich, um, as you see. Uh, now, um, most of them, most of the um, triadic uh, uh, palette is red, blue, and yellow, and uh, those are the most often used, red, uh, red, yellow, and blue. And there's another one here, orange, um, yellow, orange, orange, uh, purple, and green, this one here. Now, um, because we talked about uh, those colors, I put out just to say, because it's all about how you feel when you see a setup in those type of colors, in this type of harmonies, right? I pull out to see some examples. Um, those those two are uh, complementary com complementary colors. Um, why they're complementary? I'm looking here and I see like a, a purple blue um, and a yellow. And if I'm looking here in my wheel, you're going to have the purple and the yellow can be a, a little bit of shades uh, as long as they're keeping the, the straight line. So those two, um, this website, Visme, is, um, has a, a color, color palette of com complementary colors. Now, if you know this uh, website, it's pretty cool. Um, what you can, you can create presentation. You can, um, um, it's very interactive. It's very, that's why the use of those colors, right? Um, Another website that sticks out, kind of like screaming is Benki. Um, again, we're talking about complementary colors, mainly yellow and blue. It's strong, it's it's making an impression, right? On the other hand, if we are looking for analogous colors, those type of colors are, um, are very mild, are very um, comforting, exactly as I said. And I'm gonna give the example of Shopify. Shopify complementary colors. Shopify, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller for you to see. As you see here, there's a little bit of a, I would say like a turquoise or whatever that color is. Uh, well, those green and yellow, I would say that maybe is going somewhere here, right? So those are complementary colors, they're warm. Um, it gives like a um, easy to go feeling when, when I'm looking at this at this picture. And I'm, uh, I'm gonna have the other one, Canva, which is having the same complementary colors, not the same ones, but the same uh, harmony. Um, and it's the same, it's not screaming, it's not striking design, but it's calming, it's easy to, to navigate through, uh, right? So um, just try to think of what you feel inside of yourself when you're looking at this kind, or when you're browsing this kind of websites, right? Um, most likely this is the feeling that they wanted for you to feel, right? All right, well, the third one, the third one tertiary colors, the ones that are forming a triangle. Well, those are, I'm having two examples from um, um, from design of a room. Uh, after all, this type of rules are used uh, all the way through design, not necessarily graphic design or UX UI design. Um, those are creating balance. Uh, the first one, for example, it has red, blue, and green, uh, and the yellow. There you go, red, blue, and yellow. The first one, with a little bit of shading, is not going to be exactly the, the same, the same, the same uh, color, right? Um, but if you look how beautifully is is used, mainly red, 
but then that yellow is just putting the perfect dot over the eye there, right? And the next one, we're talking about orange, purple, and green. Um, the same as small accent of purple, small accent of, of, uh, of green um, over, a, I don't know, light orange. It, it, looks, uh, it looks comforting. It, it looks classy, right? Now, um, for this, I have for you, I want to show you um, two very important resources for me. And uh, I'm using this um, very often when I'm, uh, when I'm doing some freelancing or I'm doing some stuff, uh, some uh, creating color palette uh, cool coolers. And if you don't know it, uh, we're going to work with it a little bit later. But for this case, with the color palette, I want to show you a color, uh, the color wheel. Color wheel, if you don't know it, it's amazing. Now, what this is doing is that we're talking about the harmonies here. The ones that we talked, we have them here. Analogous, monochromatic, complementary, even more uh, combinations. Um, and if you take the example, for example, uh, analogous, the first one, right? We have for analogous, we have um, any three um, colors, one after another. And as you see, as I'm playing uh, in, in the color palette, I'm picking up um, the colors that I want, right? So um, this is very cool. Um, if you want to have like a big picture um, of, you know, how those colors that I imagine that I'm going to put on the website will look like together, you can find them here. Or you can have, for example, monochromatic when we're talking about different uh, shades uh, of the same color. This is also cool. Also, you can uh, you can move a little bit, make it darker, lighter. Uh, complementary colors, the ones that are opposite to each other. This is also cool. Um, split complementary, those are also complementary because those two are very close to each other. Complementary, they're not very one opposite to another. Uh, triadic or tertiary colors. Uh, no, tertiary triadic because they're uh, creating a, a triangle um, and so on so far. It's up to you if you want to play a little bit with it. Um, for me, uh, I find it very helpful. Uh, we're going to have the link um, probably in YouTube when uh, when the video is going to be uploaded. All right. And uh, the next one, because we talked about it, is Cool Wars, which is amazing. Um, what this... Uh, oh, it's spinning. Um, okay. What it's doing, as you see, I'm already logged in. I don't have the pro version because the, the free version is pretty enough for me. Um, uh, this, uh, this little guy is like literally, um, if you have a picture, you already have a logo, you already have, uh, let's say, um, two, three colors in the logo. You can start, um, we can, you, you can start with, uh, uh, with this one. You can upload the logo. You can import the, the, uh, the pictures from the logo. And then you can find whatever else do you want for those two, three colors that you have in the logo. You can literally create a color palette based on the logo or from scratch or from just an idea. Um, I have this one here open. So let's say I would like for this one to stay and I would like for this one to stay. I'm locking them. And then if I'm, if I'm, if I'm pressing the space bar, it's changing the other color palette until I'm going to find something very comforting or something that I'm looking for. Uh, and then you can lock it again. This one looks pretty cool. You can I lock it again, and I'm looking for another two. Maybe you decide that five colors is too much, so you can close one, and you can have only four colors, or you can have three colors. These coolers is really, really, really cool. Also, you have the option of explore the predefined color palettes. Um, maybe you want to have an inspiration. Maybe you want to use one of them. Um, also, you can export them in different formats, right? Everything is free, and uh, this is very helpful for um, uh, for design. Um, this is it for now. Now, what is the best color scheme for the website? Um, this is a very cool question because uh, you know when you're putting together your website, the color scheme should be um, one that direct um complements um and the lines with uh, with your brand um when you're creating the website you're not thinking necessarily only about brand you're talking uh, you're thinking about uh, your audience too right so the best color scheme um 
are those who are um, building your brand and resonating, this is what I'm thinking, resonating with the audience. Now, um, your ultimate goal, the ultimate goal of, of the brand is to engage um, uh, and develop a very strong um, brand recognition, right? You want to have a memorable bra uh, brand, uh, something that cannot be forgot forgotten or uh, and something that, you know, the user wants to to click on, wants to remember, wants to share. Now think about all of those, uh, think about all of those uh, colors and how the colors are um, affecting the audience. Um, before that, we're gonna think a little bit about how it affects uh, the brand personality. And uh, I pull out here red, uh, happiness and excitement and orange is for fun uh, and friendly, green is for nature, freshness, money, yellow, optimism, um, and also happiness, uh, purple, creativity and quality, and blue, uh, reassurance and um, uh, making your brand dependable, black is for elegance and luxury, and brown implies reliability, white user friendly, pure and clean. Um, now, as I was reading this, I was thinking about all the... the you know the some ideas some brands that are popping up and how i've seen a lot of blue um when you're accessing for example uh cryptocurrency when you're ac accessing a brand um uh bank uh, products um so um it's very important how you show yourself as a brand what exactly you want to send there and what do you want for the audience to feel when you send out that color, when you send out that message, uh, that visual, right? Now, um, this is when we're talking about the brand, but when we're talking about um, the audience, we're talking about the color psychology. Um, this is a study of um, how colors can um, um, affect uh, human behavior, right? Um, and here there are different uh, ways. Um, association and meaning, where the colors are uh, um, often uh, associated with a specific emotion, right? Um, or maybe a cultural meaning or um, a psychological response. Um, if you're thinking about, we were talking about blue earlier, right? When talking about blue is um, uh, usually um, linked with calm and trust. Uh, uh, red is more like, I don't know, passion, uh, it's more energy. Now, take a break and think how that Coca-Cola uh, brand would look like if it would be like, instead of red, yellow, or it would be, I don't know, blue, or maybe it's going to be, I don't know, green. Green might be, but then I'm asking myself, is something connected with the nature, which is not, right? So this is how we are thinking, and this is how we, as consumers and users, we're perceiving the colors. Put yourself in their shoes while, while thinking about the color palette. What do you feel about that color? Uh, cultural variations, this is uh, the meaning of uh, um, a color can be perceived in different ways. Um, for different cultures, right? Um, remember where is your target audience, know your target audience so you can give them the right color. Um, emotional impact. Uh, we know that the colors are, um, uh, uh, are evoking uh, like an emotional response there. This is what we want, right? Warm colors uh, like uh, red and orange, for example, they are more uh, energetic colors while the warm, the, the, the uh, cold colors are the ones who are more like cool, um, calm, and, you know, um, gives you peace and tranquility. Uh, personal preferences, um, users are guided by individual experiences, they're guided by memories, uh, personal um, preferences, um, there's a lot of things that can influence the um, how people are responding to colors. Remember that when you're uh, uh, when you're designing. And um, the truth is that the um, personal associ associations of of what the people are doing there up there um, with specific colors um, usually. Mm, 
I want to say override, I'm going to say override uh, the general color uh, um, psychology principles. Because after all, we know what we know, but the user is uh, its own person and it has its preferences. So um, sometimes their preferences override everything that we're putting um, uh, in our design. Another one is color combination. Um, the color combination can also um, influence uh, how the website is perceived, right? Um, we want to create contrast. Uh, uh, usually complementary colors are creating contrast um, while the warm colors and analogous colors uh, are creating um, harmony, right? Um, application in design um, where um, um, I'm going to give an example, for example, um, calming uh, color scheme. Yeah, a calming color scheme might be um, uh, chosen for a healthcare app. Um, this is uh, very important um, because you want for a person to, to feel calm whenever they're accessing the app, uh, while uh, the vibrant colors um, for example, can be used in the marketing campaigns, right? When you want to advertise something or something to pop there. Environmental uh, impact uh, colors influence how um, individuals perceive and interact with the environment. Um, and if you want to uh, just feel what I said, imagine that, um, how would you feel if you would be, for example, um, I don't know, in, in, in a, in a room that can influence your productivity and uh, um, your mood, for example. The colors of the room, um, you know, usually when you go to the bedroom, you have uh, like a light blue or something just because it works on your uh, on your mood and um, puts you in the right, right place, right? And then gender and uh, age differences. It is said that um, some, uh, you know, the uh, specific gender um, like specific color, color palette, uh, the same with uh, um, different age uh, target audience. Now, um, let's see how are we going to create um, a color palette in Figma. And uh, I think that before, uh, before I want to, to start talking about this, um, I would like to just uh, uh, get over some uh, basics. Um, basics, I don't know. Um, somehow those are the foundation of uh, of uh, how you start creating a, a color uh, <clears throat> color palette from scratch. Excuse me. Um, we're starting with five colors, five colors from which uh, two are neutral and, and we use them as background. I gave here an example, uh, neutral colors. Those are really warm, those are really nice for the background. This is this is the rule, but it's not you know any rule can be broken. So there are also websites who are like popping up and screaming with blue and uh, red, and we saw yellow earlier. Um, but let's stick with um, the rule and see how it goes further. So two neutral colors. Also neutral colors are helping my design and are help are helping when when I'm designing to um, to breathe in my design. It gives me it gives me space and it gives me air, right? The second the uh, the, the second part is choosing two bolder colors. I'm going to use those bolder colors as accents, um, only here and there, whatever is needed. And as as it's written here, I'm going to use them for icons, headlines, dividers. You can create, for example, cards uh, with those two bolder colors. Um, I put in red because I know what red uh, tells me. Red tells me. Pay attention, do not use bold colors in large areas like backgrounds because it's going to be too much, because you're going to confuse the user, because the user will have no idea where to, to click. And then my last color, a color out of five is one contrasting color. That color is the color that stands out. That color is the CTA. That color has only one fun function and only one click, interact with me, click me, see what's next. That tells the user you can click further, okay? 
Again, red color, do not use this color for any else but the CTA. It's confusing for the users. So as I said, um, I'm ready to go to, to the website. And let's see how we would um, create a color palette. Now, if you choose to create a color palette from scratch, um, first thing first, I'm going to go here uh, as soon as it's loading. All right, to the right here, I have explore. And let's say I have no idea. Well, I have an idea of what I want to create. I don't know. Um, you can create, um, for example, something like, a, I don't know, a vegan restaurant or I don't know what business. But the main idea, whatever you're creating, starts from the same thing. Whatever you're creating, I want my two neutral colors. And because I want my two neutral colors, the easiest way to find them out is to ask for gray here. I'm gonna um, search for gray because it's the easiest to find two neutral colors, okay? Now, when I'm looking here in the color palettes, I know that I need two neutral colors. I need two accent colors and one that is gonna be my CTA. One that it, it's loud, 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 all right. Just gonna go and just look to see which one tells me something. This is pretty cool. I don't have anything. This one is CTA, maybe it's not strong enough. <clears throat> this one is also cool. I keep looking and looking. Oh, I like this one. All right, so I like this one. And I'm gonna say like this, I'm uh, looking, this is not really, really white, which is very cool. Uh, I'm looking at two neutral colors. Um, white and black, you can choose them as neutral colors. Black, not necessary, but white. Um, but maybe you would like to have something not really white, but a pearl white or something that it's close to white, but not white. Um, in this case, this is not white. I'm happy with it. And I'm having another one to complement it. I don't know if I want to have maybe a shading or maybe um, uh, something else also as a background. I have two accent colors, very nice shades of blue um, that I can use them either icons. This is very good for icon. Or I can use this one as an icon uh, when it's not active and when the icon is active um, menu. Uh, I can have the other one. Um, and also I have my CTA color, which is very loud, matter. All the colors have a number. You can just copy and paste, uh, export this one in Figma and keep, keep going with it. If I don't want this accent color, again, I can block it, block the rest of them. And with pause, with a, uh, a break from the computer, I can look for another, oh, that's not bad. It's very accent, very, very striking as a CTA. Um, this one also works, right? So you can find, that's nice. You can find, uh, you can play with it and you can find some cool color palette um, with coolers. And I believe that they help you, uh, they help you a lot. Um, further on, I'm not gonna continue with color palette, but I'm gonna say, okay, so now we have the color palette. Now we know how to, what the colors are, what's the meaning of the color and what's the emotion that the, the colors are evoking to the users. How am I gonna put them in my design? And for this, we're coming with the 60, 30, 10 rule. This is, um, this rule again, you can apply this rule. Oh no. Uh, just a second, just a second. I was playing with those earlier. Um, this rule can be, uh, this rule is applied anywhere, not necessary in our uh, website design. Um, also in the rules, I saw some really cool pictures. I didn't do the, I take them out um, of uh, um, room design. Um, with the same uh, uh, 60, 30, uh, 10 rule. And I believe that this is very, it is very useful and it uh, it uh, it 
really is a guidance for guidance guidance for 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 the users. All right, so this is how it goes. Um, I have uh, I pulled out here three uh, colors. Um, so we can see how exactly um, 60, 30, 10 rule applies. Um, all of them have the width of uh, 1000 pixels, but I'm going to change them according to their um, purpose in my app. So the first one, this white, uh, like really white, this white is going to be the background. So because it's going to be my background, that's my 60, right? 60, which translates to 600 pixels out of 1,000. I consider 1,000 my whole, okay? So, uh, what happened? Yeah. All right, again, so this one from 1,000 uh, is going to be 600, okay? So this is my, my, my 60, and then 30 is the accent. It's not the CPA, 30 is the accent. So my accent, this blue, that I'm gonna use um, is uh, 30, that means 300. And my CTA is only 10, that means 100 out of 1000. So this is how they look like. I'm gonna arrange them here to look nice and pretty. I was playing a little bit earlier with them and that's why they look the way they look. All right, so now I'm gonna group them just to carry them everywhere. And this is my 60, 30, 10 uh, rule. Of course, they can have shades. This white can have a little bit of a gray. The blue can have a little bit of a light blue because the accent can be pressed or not. Um, the CTA also can have a lighter or not green-ish um, because it's pressed or not. You have different states of the button. So um, of course, um, uh, you can have different shades. But as a main idea, this is how it works. And I'm, uh, I'm, I've am i seen this online and I was fascinated by, by the way how well is explained. Um, and that's why I wanted to put it out here for you. Um, this is an example of a um, website um, where it says that the 60, 30, uh, 10 rule is applied. And I would like for you to look at it. Um, and I would say that this is not really respecting the rule. In what way? Well, I'm having the white as a background. Let's say that I have some shades of gray, which is fine. It's respecting my 60% there. But then if I'm looking at that blue, I see that that blue goes into the green. The green is supposed to be my CTA. Is there's nothing to do with why is combining with blue. Um, also, I'm not having really a, a good understanding which one am I supposed to click here because all of them, yeah, one of them is, is in bold, one of them is thicker. It tells me that the study is clicked, but how about the rest of them? So why do I have them click? Why do I, do I have them colored, right? They're not active. Why do I have them colored? So this rule is not necessarily well applied. What happened later is that the design was redone. I hide it here. So you can see the comparison and to see the wow. All right, so it's like that. Bam. So I'm gonna go and look how the rule is applied here. So I'm having a really nice white background, 60%, yes. And then I'm having that blue, the accent, the accent that tells me, oh, this is a card and it's really nicely done. And I have also the writing, right? Some headers, some numbers, the important stuff, right? Um, and that's it. And here, the, the menu, really nicely done. If I'm looking at the proportion, if I have to compare them even, yes, this is a clear 30, really clear 30. And later on, I'm looking at the 10, at the CTA, the one that screams, click on me, do something with me, hey, I'm active. Learning plan, it was the other place too. But look how nicely now the buttons look out here. If you compare with the, the accessibility in here, it was not much, right? So, um, and also the, the menu, the other ones are not active, while one tells to the user, this is where you are now, this is clicked, right? I believe that this is a very nice example of how the 60, 30, 10 uh, rule is applied. Um, and um, it, I went and I went browsing a little bit and uh, I saw a lot of apps 
Um, there are so many there. If uh, if you go on Revo or if you go uh, just for inspiration and see how is this 60, 30, 10 rule applied? Again, we're not talking about shades or because there are shades here. There are also shades um, a little tiny bit, but uh, the main idea 60, 30, 10, uh, this is very important. All right. I hope that this is, um, uh, this is a very good example for you. All right. So um, there is not much time left, but I would like to go uh, through accessibility uh, a little bit uh, as best practices and also uh, some resources. And after that, uh, a little bit of um, best practices for branding when we're talking about colors. Or, excuse me, my throat is a little bit. Mm. All right, so um, accessibility, um, it means the designing for everyone. It means um, being inclusive in design. It means uh, taking into consideration everyone's needs. Um, this includes uh, the individuals uh, with um, different abilities. Uh, we're talking about visual, auditory, and uh, motor skills. But when we are talking about uh, colors, we are talking about two huge, two main uh, accessibility principles. We're talking about the contrast and legibility. They're highly connected, right? We're talking about the contrast. We're talking about um, creating um, a clear distinction between the text and the background. Um, that is enriching the readability, legibility. Um, and leg legibility is um, about selecting the colors that make the text uh, easily uh, readable, right? Now, um, before going further on to the tips and best practices, uh, I have a few really cool resources. Not sure if you ever try this, but it's worth trying. Uh, contrast uh, checker, color contrast checker, accessibility web, uh, color palette also. I'm gonna start from here uh, because we are going to talk about uh, accessible color palette. Um, they are giving you according to um, web content access the guideline, uh, guidelines. They are giving you um, the, the rating, the scoring for accessibility. So basically you can put here your color and then you can generate and see which um, font color is the best, works the best for your background color, for your CTA color, uh, color right? Because, or for your um, uh, accent color, um, it's, um, it's, it's very helpful. This is very helpful for, for designing with accessibility. Um, also, we have color contrast checker. Um, uh, those are going to, um, you put your color and again, they give you a, a different types of, uh, um, uh, of solutions for, uh, the best, uh, contrast, uh, based on the, uh, how, uh, how big the, the, your copies text is and uh, so on and so far. Um, those are very, I'm using them. Um, and that's why I wanted to share it with you. And also, I believe the Stark and Col uh, Colorblind, those are two Figma plugins um, that are um, very, very useful when you're doing accessibility testing. When you're, every once in a while, once you found out, okay, this is my color palette, and this is the color of my text, and this is what I'm going to do. Once you're going to start doing one page or two pages um, or uh, frames um, of your app, um, it's very good to uh, to do a testing and see where you are uh, when you're talking about accessibility. For example, colorblind. I'm gonna go and just do it very fast here. Um, I'm gonna copy it outside here. There you go. Uh, well, what this one is doing, you select whatever you wanna try, go in plugins, colorblind, and um, as soon as you have the pop-up with, you know, uh, all the, the, the visual impairments that you want to check it for, uh, create views. So now you're going to have your frame, the way it looks for different visual impairments, right? So you would see that some uh, cannot distinguish the green uh, while others, uh, for, for others, the blue is a little bit um, um, is a little bit uh, hard to distinguish. That's why it's the best to find out 
whom are you designing for, not necessarily only what, right? Who is your target audience? Further on. Now, best practices uh, for accessibility. First of all, um, no matter what, you have to be sure to have enough contrast. And when we're talking about contrast, we're not talking about two very strong colors because if you if you go and play a little bit with the colors, you're gonna see they're starting to blend in one into another uh, when they are too strong. Uh, use the colors with um, enough contrast um, to be easy to distinguish, you know, to make it easy to distinguish uh, the text to, um, uh, this is very important for, um, for users with visual impairments. Um, all the time, as I was saying, that's for accessibility. Um, you, you can use Figma plugins, you can use website, you can use, don't forget um, to test for uh, accessibility. After all, you want to address your product or service, whatever you're creating um, to, to everyone and to a large uh, public. Avoid color as a sole indicator. We talked about it earlier. Um, don't think that you're going to call color code and everyone is going to go and do and see uh, that and use label, use icon, use text, help those who might not see that color. As you see, uh, we tested the color blindness, um, blindness earlier and um, some people don't see blue. So if your city is blue and then you have a dark blue, right? And you have a test of what, text, a text of white, uh, that city doesn't, doesn't, doesn't stick out for, for someone who, um, who has this visual impairment. That's why it's very good to put a label. That's why your home icon is good to have also a text below under whatever you want to put it. So um, don't, uh, don't design with only color, right? Uh, consider color blindness, we already talked about it. Uh, clear feedback, clear feedback. Again, we're talking about uh, color as a sole indicator. Um, you have that, you know, when, when you do something in the app and you have a check, a green check and say, sometimes it's just green check or something of an action that the user took. Um, now it's very good to say uh, done or action completed, or I don't know, payment done, or that is the feedback that I was talking about. It Give it back to the user. Don't count on the fact that if you put a check mark there and it's green and the user is gonna understand, oh, he did the payment successfully, right? Um, choose accessible color palettes. We have uh, accessible color palette generator. Um, uh, this is going to be uh, in the link uh, on YouTube. So um, um, accessible uh, color palette is, uh, you know, uh, thinking of all the individuals when you're when you're designing. Uh, now. Um, Use color consistently. Don't change colors um, within the design. If you start with one color, maintain the consistency because uh, you know the the user is going to be lost in uh, in the pages of of the app or on the screens. Um, and this, uh, after all, it helps keeping consistent consistency. Helps the user to. Um, um, to associate specific colors with a specific action, right? Or with specific information. Um, and after all, makes uh, makes the navigation easier and uh, a better user experience, right? Um, and the test across devices, uh, remember that um, not, uh, not all the devices are showing uh, the same colors uh, from the laptop, from the desktop to the, I don't know, to the phone or to, um, that's why it's, it's the best to, um, um, to test across the devices much more that we are creating a, um, a responsive design, we're changing, we're, we're moving. Um, and then you want to see in that way, the way you redesigned or, or you rearrange the, uh, the elements of your app, how is that going to look for the mobile compared with the uh, website version, right? All right, so uh, as we saw this from the perspective of the user, I'm gonna think about, okay, for branding, what are the best practices when we're talking about colors? And here is understanding the audience. I think that this is one of the, um, uh, one of the most important, uh, important thing 
to know for whom you are designing and to know what emotions do you want to evoke to, to the users, right? So knowing the target, target audience and its preferences or cultural background, where are they living? Um, you're trying to, to create that emotional response through the colors. Now, um, that also helps to define the brand personality. Um, you have to know exactly who you are as a brand um, in order to find out who they are as the user and consumer. Um, choose the right colors that are they're aligning with your values and uh, the message that you want to send to them. Um, limit your color palette. Uh, even though I like rainbow, don't make it rainbow-ish. Uh, use few colors um, to make the user understand you better. Um, consider the color psychology when designing. Uh, so those color psychology for the user and um, you as a brand, those two have to be very well connected, uh, you know, in, in colors. Uh, also, um, test for uh, accessibility, uh, as we said earlier, all the time. Uh, consider cultural context, uh, where, where are the users coming from, uh, where, is the, where is your app going to be seen, how are those colors perceived there, um, you don't want to offend anyone through, through those colors or you don't want to send wrong um, message, right, um, be unique when creating a color palette, the idea is I want for my brand to stick out, I want for my brand to be remembered, because if it's remembered, it's shared. If it's remembered, it's trusted. If it's remembered, people are gonna come back. And after all, this is what I want, right? So be unique, um, make it make it you, make it like, uh, uh, like Coca-Cola, right? I Coca-Cola took a lot of time, but then that red is, is theirs or um, red kind of color. Right. Um, utilize color here are here are his. Um, of course, uh, this is important because um, we, through color uh, here are his, um, we are um, guiding the user through, you know, in the in the in the user flow uh, in our app, and I believe that this is um, a very important, and that's why it's very good to. A work with 60 30 10 rule um this is the the way of guiding one of the ways of guiding the user um uh, through colors also seek feed feedback this is uh, important when uh, when you're coming up with a color palette um is very good to ask around ask colleague colleagues or maybe um ask few friends around you know see what they feel about that color and the purpose that you're using the color for. Um, this is very important uh, every once in a while to just uh, get in check and see uh, what people think and what people feel. All right. So um, I think that for now, uh, this is it. Um, uh, I'm not sure exactly if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Uh, and I hope you um, enjoy this session. Uh, for me, it was uh, I, I love talking about colors and tell you the truth. Uh, one of the um, um, the users, one one of those who those of you who listened for the previous webinars, asked for this um, because they said it's very hard to um, it's very hard to 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 find the right color palette. Now you know you will never know uh, that that is the right color palette unless you're not going to try it, unless you're not going to test it unless you're not going to hear some feedback um, uh, from it. Um, and this is uh, colors. I believe that they're very fond of me because uh, I love painting. Um, and um, that's why I decided to do this uh, workshop for you today. Um, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome. Uh, you can uh, uh, open your mic and uh, speak freely. If not, um, this uh, webinar is going to be posted on uh, Open Bootcamp um, YouTube channel, along with the links uh, that I provided in it. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, as much as I enjoyed uh, talking to you. <laughs> Any questions? Anyone?
on. Well, um, this is the last webinar um, that we're going to have uh, this year. Next year, we're going to start with some new ones. Uh, I think I've seen a chat. Oh, my pleasure, Lu, Lu. My, my, my pleasure, my pleasure. Um, go ahead and look for, I'm not sure exactly when it's going to be on YouTube, but go ahead and access those links. Those links, believe me, it's not because I said so, but um, I love to share what helped me the most and they're helping me. Um, go grab them and uh, try them out. It was, uh, it, it's... Uh, it's very easy to come up with the colors like that to get some inspiration. All right, so uh, nice talking with you, all of you there. Um, happy holidays to all of you, stay healthy. Uh, and I hope we're gonna see each other soon. Next year is like round, uh, around the corner, all right? So have a nice evening, have a nice day. My pleasure, my pleasure. All the best to all of you.